My name is Balakrishnan. I am a senior consulting architect at Red Hat. In this video, I am going to show how to develop a cloud native microservices application using Quarkus. The easiest way to get started with Quarkus is to use the Maven archetype for Quarkus together with the Quarkus Maven plugin version 0.20 and the create command. On issuing this command, we will be asked to specify the group ID for the project followed by the artifact ID followed by the version number for the project and then the need for creating a RESTful resource and the name of the REST resource and then finally the path through which the RESTful resource needs to be exposed and on executing this command we can see that the Quarkus application has got created. Now let's take a look at the application that has got generated and in here we can see that there are three main folders that have got generated. The first one being the Docker folder, followed by the Java folder, and then the resources folder. And opening up the Java folder, we can see that the order resource that we have specified as a part of the input has got created, and it has also got mapped to the specific path that we have specified. Besides that, it also has a method called hello, which returns a hello string. Now let's go ahead and compile this application and deploy it. And in order to compile this application and run it, we will be issuing the command maven compile quarkus dev. The application is getting compiled now and it's up and running as we can see from this particular message. Now let's go ahead and invoke the endpoint to see if the application works as intended. And we can see that the application provides the expected response message, which is hello in this case. One of the important things to be noted here is that we are running the application currently using the Quarkus dev mode. So the biggest uh, advantage of this dev mode is that it is a hot deployment mode. And as a result of that, any change that we make to this application would get automatically compiled and deployed behind the scenes, thereby eliminating the need for a manual deployment. Now that I have changed the response message that is going to be provided by this particular method, let's go back and re-invoke the endpoint and we can see that it provides back the updated response message. Now let's go back to the application and add some persistence logic to this particular application using Quarkus Panache, which provides a simplified Hibernate ORM. Now in order to do that, we need to add certain additional extensions to this particular project. So let's see what are all the uh, set of uh, extensions that is provided by Quarkus. In order to see the list of extensions that is provided by Quarkus, we need to issue the maven Quarkus list extensions command. And on execution of this command, we can see the list of all available extensions. For example, we can see Quarkus agrol extension, Quarkus Amazon DynamoDB extension, and so on and so forth. In this application, we are actually going to persist the data into a MySQL database. So we need to select only the specific set of extensions that we need for this application. Let's go ahead and choose them. So we can add the extension to this project by using the maven Quarkus add extensions command and then specifying the list of all extensions that we would need. For example, in this particular application, we are going to use the Quarkus Hibernate ORM Panache, followed by the REST EC extensions, because we would be exposing the entity logic using REST interfaces, and finally, the MariaDB extension in order to persist the data into database. Let's add these extensions now. So the extensions have got added now, and if we go to the pom.xml of this particular project, we would see that those extensions that we have added there has got really added here as dependencies. Now that we have defined the dependencies, let's go ahead and define the entities that are required for this particular application. Now, in the interest of time, I have already created the required set of entities. For example, I have created two entities here, the first one being the order data and the next one being the order line item. And the relationship that I have defined here between the order data and the order line item is one to many because each order can have many number of line items. Now, let's take a closer look at this entity. And we can see that I have actually extended this particular entity with panache entity. So any class that extends the panache entity 
automatically gets certain features. For instance, in this particular entity, I have not defined any explicit ID field because the panache entity automatically adds the ID field under the hood. And not just that, for example, we can see that I have defined the attributes or these fields with public identifier. As a result of that, panache behind the scenes would automatically create the getters and setters for these fields and any access to these fields would directly invoke those accessors behind the scenes. And not just that, Panache also provides uh, or basically eliminates the need for using the DAOs as well as the repositories. For example, in order to access the, uh, the entity logic, we can directly use the static methods that are provided by Panache. For instance, in this case, in order to get the list of all order data from the database, we can directly use the find all uh, static method, which is provided by the Panache entity. We can directly invoke that on top of the entity itself. And similarly, we can also use the direct persist method on top of the entity in order to store this particular entity into the database. And similarly, even Panache simplifies the way by which we can write the queries. For example, in order to get the list of all order data from the database based on the amount field which is defined in the database for the order data, all what we have to do is just specify the specific field based on which the filtering or the query has to be done and pass it on to the find method. And together with that, the specific value based on which the filtering has to be done can be directly specified here. And similarly, even the complex queries can also be specified directly into the find method and it works in as intended that we will be seeing in action in the next few minutes. Okay, now that we have defined the application logic, the last step is to define the database connectivity details, which we can actually specify here directly into the application properties as can be seen here. Now let's execute this application. So once again, we would be issuing the maven compile quarkus dev command and we can see that the application is getting compiled and it is up and running now. Now, let's go to the specific endpoint for creating the order data and let's, let's invoke this endpoint with a post request. Now, we can see that the order data has got persisted. Now, let's create one more order data with a slightly different input. For example, a changed value of order amount and with a changed value for price. Let's invoke it again and both the orders have got persisted into the database successfully. Now let's test the other endpoints that we have exposed and we can see that it shows both the orders. And let's also test the other endpoint wherein we would be filtering all the orders based on the line items price whichever is going to be greater than 400 and we can see that it provides the expected results here as well. Now one of the other biggest advantages of Quarkus is that it provides the ability to create native executables. So the biggest advantage of the native executables is that it provides relatively faster startup times and also it ensures that the memory footprint occupied by this application is going to be very, very less. Now, in order to show this in action, I'm going to use two different Docker containers so the first container is going to run this Docker application in the normal JVM mode using this Docker file definition. And the second Docker container is actually going to run this Quarkus application using the native executable, which we can see in this Docker file definition. Now, in order to create the uh, native executables for the Quarkus application, we can use this command maven package minus p native and we can also specify the specific runtime for which the native executable has to be created, which in this case is going to be Docker. In the interest of time, I have already created the native executable. So let's go ahead and directly execute or run the Docker containers, the two different Docker containers. So now let's first run the Docker container, which is going to host the Quarkus application and run it in the normal JVM mode and we can see that the Quarkus application has started in 
1.857 seconds and when we go to the docker stats we can see the memory usage of this particular Quarkus application which runs in the normal JVM mode and it's around 194.8 megabytes. Now let's go back and run the Docker container which is going to run the Quarkus application in using the native executable and we can see that the startup time is much much lesser. For example, it takes only 0 0.036 seconds. Now if we go back to the memory usage again we can see that the memory usage is very very less okay finally now we can go ahead and deploy this particular application into OpenShift and that's going to be very very simple now we would be using the standard way of deploying the application we would be using the OC new build command to deploy this application so the build is getting created and now we will go ahead and patch this build config to specify that we would need the OpenShift runtime to use the Docker strategy and also it has to consider the Docker file which references the native executable. Let's specify that and issue this command and the patching is done. Now finally the last step is actually to trigger the build on the OpenShift side by using the OC start build command. Now the execution of this command would take some time because it would be uploading the uh, native executable into OpenShift so we will have to wait for it to get completed. Now that the build is successful let's go ahead and create the application in OpenShift by using the OC new app command pointing to the image stream that we created just now and then followed by the database connectivity parameters. Now I have an instance of MySQL database running in my OpenShift so we will be connecting to this particular instance from this particular application. Now let's execute this command and we can see that the application has got created. Now let's expose a route for this particular application and that has also got created. Now let's go back to the application and test it out. Let's get the endpoint for this particular application that is running on OpenShift and let's go ahead and invoke the create endpoint with a post request and we can see that the application works as intended. So finally we have deployed the Quarkus application into OpenShift and it is running as intended. This completes the demonstration.